Hello folks. Well, this is my new Chinese made uh, diesel heater. Uh, the ad for this diesel heater said that it was rated for 8 kW. A kilowatt of power is approximately 3400 BTUs. So I assumed the output would be a around 27,000 BTUs if you multiply 3400 times the 8 kW. When I received the unit, the owner's manual, which is here in my hand. By the way, this manual is not too bad for a Chinese manual. It is in pretty good English. But the owner's manual indicated that the fuel consumption was 0.55 liters per hour. If the heater were 100% efficient, 0.55 liters contains only about 19,000 BTUs of fuel, if, if you look up the rating of, of the fuel. So the he heater's output can't be 27,000. So where did the 8KW come from? As you see, I've just pulled the unit out of the box. No modifications have been made. I put it on this makeshift stand uh, so far, the only fuel I've run through it has been uh, number two low sulfur diesel. And uh, there's a tiny bit of fuel here in this auxiliary fuel tank. And it's red in color because it's uh, off-road diesel. And by buying off-road diesel, I can save 22 cents a gallon. I, I believe I gave uh, 379 for, for per gallon for this fuel. My intent in this video is to present some field test data of this unit to estimate the actual output heat. One way to determine the heat delivery of the unit is to measure the airflow passing through the unit in cubic feet per minute, measuring the temperature of the inlet air and the outgoing warm air, and multiply that by 1.08, in other words, 1.08 times the airflow in cubic feet per minute times the temperature difference in Fahrenheit will give you BTUs per hour. So you can see here a probe near the air intake to the unit, which is here. And then there is a second probe in the exit air here. These two probes are connected to a little uh, wireless-based, actually this is designed as, uh, for heat, for cooking, for use in an oven. And here is the output device. Right now the input and output, oh, excuse me, input and output should be fairly close together. You may also notice that there is a time clock function at the top that can be used. So this device, the unit is powered up. This device is allowed to come up and, I, and it was powered up and set for, the controller was set for maximum burn rate, maximum heat output. Now the next thing I did was to measure the, the diameter of the inlet and then I used this anemometer here. This is a Dwyer 470 series anemometer and this device gives me the velocity air. I just basically set the probe in the, in the front of this, read the output meter, came up with the number of feet per minute that was going into the unit. So once I had this information, the area of the inlet, the velocity of the air going in, the temperature difference, then I can calculate the approximate output heat of this unit. Now, there's a second part of the testing that I did, and my fuel source, as I pointed out earlier, was this little auxiliary fuel tank, and you see a small quantity of diesel fuel in, still in the tank. This is calibrated in milliliters. I believe it goes from 50 milliliters up to 300 milliliters. And basically after the unit was up and running 
and I was convinced it would had stabilized. I would read the cal what the fuel level was, start a stopwatch, and then about 30 minutes later, I stopped the stopwatch and read the amount of fuel left in it. So the difference between these two readings told me in 30 minutes what my fuel consumption was. So what were the test results? Well, in my comments that follow, I'm going to kind of give you the Reader's Digest shorter version. And I, I, I encourage you to look at my notes that are t uh, typewritten and attached to the video uh, where you can examine the calculations. There's, there, it's not rocket science, but it is a little tedious, a lot of numbers and so forth. But um, let's just go ahead. I'll kind of summarize here what I found, found out. The inlet speed with the unit running at maximum heat level was found to be uh, was 2,000 feet per minute. The area of the hole, the opening here, was approximately 5.8 square inches. So the airflow was calculated to be 81 cubic feet per minute. When I referred to my owner's manual, it talked about the maximum flow being 85 cubic feet per minute, so we should be in the ballpark here. The temperature rise through the unit was 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So putting this into the equation that we just talked about, those numbers indicate that this unit was producing 10,300 BTUs per hour in round figures. Now my fuel consumption figures, uh, well I consumed 225 milliliters over 30.8 minutes and that works out to be 0.44 liters per hour as the fuel consumption. The owner's manual, again, indicated that the maximum fuel consumption should be 0.55 liters. So, for whatever reason, my unit is not quite, uh, should not be putting out quite the rated output because, frankly, I'm not putting the rated fuel into it. Also, if you take the heat rating of the fuel, uh, at a point, uh, 0.44 liters per hour, you come up with, in round figures, 15,000 BTUs per hour in energy was being input. I was getting out 10,300. So that would suggest that this unit was producing, uh, was about a 70% efficiency in, the, in production of heat. So, still, where does the 8KW come from? When I looked at my, my owner's manual again, I found that it listed calorific output at 8,000. I must admit that was a bit of an unusual term for me. So, uh, when I googled this, and let me make sure I read this exactly, calor the value or the definition of calorific value, calorific value is the amount of energy present in food or fuel which is determined by complete combustion of a specified quantity at constant pressure and normal conditions, the unit calorific value is kilojoules per kilogram. Now, if you think about that real carefully, kilojoule per kilogram, there's no time quantity involved there. It's as though you burn a given amount of fuel in kilograms and you get out an X amount of joules, but there's no time. It doesn't say in an hour, a minute, or two days. 
So it also indicated that the uh, calorific value, it had a W in it, which suggests, again, watts. So perhaps, what if, what this owner manual means is that there is 8,000 watts per kilogram. Uh, this is what this unit is capable of. Now, this number in and of itself doesn't tell you a unit of time. So, under that assumption, I begin to massage this number. First, I change the 8,000 watts to BTUs. And uh, when I did that, well, then that became... And then I also modified kilograms. I looked up the density of diesel fuel and converted kilograms into liters. And when I did that massage, and again, if you'll look in my notes, you'll see how I manipulated the numbers to make that happen. I came up with a new uh, calorific value of 23,474 BTUs per liter. Now, the reason for changing this is just to get it into units that I can deal with. Now, again, to repeat myself, the owner's manual said that the maximum consumption was 5.55 liters per hour. And if you look at this, if you multiply the liters per hour times the calorific value, you come up with BTUs per hour. And that number is approximately, in round figures, 12,900 BTUs per hour. But remember that my unit only consumed 0.44 liters per hour, not 0.55. So if I do that a calculation again using the, my measured consumption, I come out with a number that is 10,300 BTUs per hour. Now, if you think back on our, my earlier conversation, that number should be familiar because it's exactly the same number that I came up with when I calculated the airflow through this unit and used that airflow and the temperature rise of the air to calculate the output of this unit. So, in summary, I'd like to say the following. Well, first of all, thanks to my son for the, giving me this heater as a Christmas present. Thus far, it's given me a number of hours of uh, entertainment. But more specifically, the second point I'd like to make is I believe my heater, as, as it sits now, has a maximum output of about 10,300 BTUs per hour with a thermal efficiency of about 70%. That's not great, but it's within the typical range of some of the older furnaces, although the, the more modern ones may be getting it up in the you know, 80-90% range of efficiency, but it's not too bad. The manufacturer's KW rating appears to be a calorific value, which doesn't give you heat output as a function of time until you apply the fuel consumption rate. Well, I appreciate for you watching, uh, and I ask that you uh, uh, welcome uh, comments, particularly if you see math errors or concept errors. Uh, we're all just trying to learn here. And again, I, if you have time and interest, I ask you to take a written, look at my written calculations, and uh, uh, hopefully that'll give you a little better insight into what uh, I looked at here. Oh, one final thing I meant to mention. Uh, diesel fuel, when I looked it up, has a rating per gallon that it calls high heat, and it has another rating which it calls low heat. And the difference between the two is BTUs lost because when the diesel is burned, moisture is created and that steam goes out the exhaust pipe so that represents loss, that heat's not really available. I made the assumption 
to use the low heat value for diesel uh, because uh, obviously there's no way, or at least the way I'm set up here, there's no way to reclaim that heat that's going out the exhaust in the form of steam. Thank you.